The most common way of calibrating isothermal heat conduction calorimeters is electrical calibration. This is easy, convenient, and quick. So this is the way, normal way that calorimeters are calibrated. Uh, and this is done by placing a heater in the calorimeter, in the sample, or close to the sample, and uh, passing an electrical current through the heater, producing heat. Uh, that it will look something like this. Uh, we have a voltage source, the battery or a voltage source outside the calorimeter. Uh, then we have leads going into the calorimeter, and inside the calorimeter we have a heater, and going back to the to the voltage source again. So, so this is this is inside the calorimeter on the sum the sample side. Um, and uh, so this is the thermostated environment. So, so then we have the voltage source outside and the heater in close to the sample. So this is a sample down here. Uh, then the current, which is I here, that passes through the sun, is measured, and we know the resistance of the heater. Now the thermal power produced down here is easily calculated by what is called uh, Joule's first law, as the current squared times the resistance. Uh, so for example, if you make, uh, let's say we have a, let's say we have a, we have a current of 12 milliamperes. These currents are usually quite low. And we have a resistance of 100 ohms. Then 12, 12 milliamperes squared times 100 ohms that gives uh, 14.4 milliwatts. So we have, we have a low thermal power produced. And we, it's good we can turn this on and off as we like. So this is a convenient way of calibrating. Uh, and if you look here, we can see the result of this. This is the thermal power, the, in this case, the, the input, the input thermal power from the electrical calibration. Uh, and here we have the baseline, here we turn the heater on, turn the voltage on, uh, and here we have a constant, in this case 14.4 milliwatt, and here we turn it off and go back again. So we come back to this later, just look at this peak here. So we have a certain thermal power being produced, and the output from the calorimeter looks something like this. Uh, go up to a steady level, and then go down again. And if you look at a steady part here, steady state part, we have a certain voltage output from the heat flow sensor. So let's, and this is called U, let's assume that this is uh, uh, 867 millivolts. Now the calibration coefficient is the, the ratio of the thermal power produced and the voltage output. And in this case, if we divide these values, we will get uh, 0.0166. And that is in units of milliwatts per millivolt. So here we have, the we have found the calibration coefficient from, a, from an electrical calibration, electrical steady state calibration. So which steady state? Uh, as you see, the, the thermal power input is like a rectangular pulse, or a square pulse. But uh, the voltage output from the calorimeter, it hasn't the same, same shape. And actually, we come back in a later lecture how, how, can, how we can correct for that. Uh, the reason it goes up asymptotically, like this is like an exponential function, and there's also an exponential function going down here, is that there is a thermal inertia of the, of the sample, of the interior of the calorimeter. So it takes some time to heat the calorimeter up to a certain level, and it takes some time for the heat to flow out, or to leak out of the calorimeter. Uh, so in this case here, we look at the steady state values. Uh, in in uh, commercial instruments, one sometimes does a quicker way, a quicker calibration, and that is to only make a short pulse and look at the output without going to steady state. So it looks like a shark's fin. Uh, and uh, the same uh, calibration coefficient epsilon can be calculated 
uh, if I write like that, that's exactly the same here, but we don't have P here and uh, U, actually we don't have so we don't have a single U value. So we have to use the integrals. The integral of we have to integrate the voltage and integrate the thermal power, but the thermal power is constant, so that is just the uh, thermal power times the the time, the duration of the pulse. But here we have to integrate. Uh, so this calibration coefficient and this calibration coefficient, they are identical. It's just two ways of doing it, steady state way and the non-steady state way, or unsteady state way. Um, so this is a very convenient way to do calibration, but uh, I believe you should complement this with what we call chemical calibration. Uh, and that's when you have a reaction similar to the reaction you want to, to measure, or, or process similar to, to the process you want to study. And you run that process in the calorimeter, and it should be a process that has a well-known heat being produced. So uh, if you, for example, do cement hydration measurements, and you have a cement, and which you know how much heat it produces during, for example, 48 hours, you run that cement, and you see you get the correct heat out. Um, so you do the electric calibration and use that calibration coefficient to evaluate your chemical calibration. Maybe you should call it the chemical validation. And if that's also correct, you get the correct value. Then you know that the calibration coefficient is correct and that you have performed the measurement in a good way. So this is also, the chemical calibration is also a proficiency test. It's not only the calibration of the instrument. Um, so you, you, you can show that you, you show that you can use the protocol you're supposed to use. Uh, now we have the calibration coefficient, and uh, from, the, from the previous lectures we had the, the, the baseline or the offset. So the full equation here. You have a voltage output from the calorimeter. We subtract the baseline or multiply that by the calibration coefficient. Then we have the thermal power, which is what we normally want. Or if you want thermal power, specific thermal power, we divide by the by the mass to get watts or milliwatts per gram. So this is the complete equation to evaluate the measurement. So in this in this lecture, I showed how to. Do electric calibration in two ways, um, and uh, in the next lecture we'll continue talking about how to uh, balance the reference, which is also very important.